Okay, now the Hangout should be working. Let me know if you have any trouble getting in. Okay, it should work now. Let me know if you cannot get in. Okay, everyone. There we go. Now everyone's coming in. Finally. Hello, everyone. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. This is the third time I've tried to start the Hangout, yeah. so it's always nice when you're talking to yourself. <laughs> I, I said two times. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to... Then I realized, wait a second, no one can hear me or see me. Uh, I'm going to skip my little morning monologue and just go right into the class. So let me get the camera on. Let's say hello to everyone. I think there's probably seven more people out there who think the class is not happening, but it is. Uh, hello, everyone. Come on in now. Everything's working. Sorry for the delay. Um, welcome back, Daniel and Adi. Nice to see you. Uh, we've got Sylvia as well. This is a different Sylvia, though. Uh, let's say hello to Constantine, who I think is new. Hello, Constantine. Hello, teacher. Teacher? Oh, my goodness. I'm John Eric. Hi, Constantine. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> and tell me about that picture. You're standing on a bridge. Yes, it is a bridge in my city. Where, where are you? What city? Uh, Russian, Vladivostok city. In what city? Vladivostok city. Vladivostok. 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 Near the, near the Japan, near the South Korea and China. Ah, there you go. And what are you doing on the bridge, besides the peace symbol? <laughs> <laughs> I walk. You walked across the bridge? Walk along bridge. Well, it's a good picture. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Very good. And Sylvia, where are you from? I think you're new here. Hi, everybody. Hello. I'm, I'm from Spain. Whereabouts in Spain? Sorry? Where in Spain? Oh, where? In Madrid. In Madrid. This yeah. is a... I have to have a little espresso, and you should have one too, or you might not be awake. Okay, so have okay. your coffee. Okay. <laughs> nice to have you with us, Sylvia. Well, I had some trouble starting the Hangout because every week, either Verbling or Google changes something, and there's always a surprise. But anyway, we got the Hangout started, and now let me see if I can... I've got the material there for you in the chat window. Let me open it, and I'll share my screen as soon as I get it open. I don't know what happened to... We've got four. We're still missing three people. I hope the rest of you are going to come in soon. Uh, all right. There you go. Okay, if you want to open that material by clicking the link in the chat window, you can but I will also be sharing my screen with you, okay? So you know you're in the right place when you see this pronunciation practice graphic. It's still loading. Give the page just a second to load, and then we'll go down to today's class. What we've been doing is working with the International Phonetic Alphabet, the IPA. Uh, Constantine, are you familiar with the International Phonetic Alphabet, the IPA? Do you know those funny little symbols that we use for pronunciation? Mm. A little bit. A little bit, Sylvia? What about you, Constantine? Uh, sorry, repeat, please. Are you familiar with the International Phonetic Alphabet, this thing here? Uh, yes. Yeah? Okay, good. So, I've created two different charts for you. This one, which is on the last page of the notes, is the consonants, like p, b, m, f, v, these sounds. And then on the page before, we saw for several weeks now the vowels. 
A E I O U R A N R A O E E O U and OI. <laughs> those are the sounds. But the problem is, those symbols are really hard to remember. So, to make your life easy, I've tried to make it much more clear and concrete. For each sound in the vowel chart, we have a color and we have something, an animal, something that you can picture. So the sound A is a gray snake, E is a green sheep, and so on. So one little trick you can do is when you learn a difficult word and you want to remember the vowel, A-E-I-O-U, you want to remember which sound it is, whether it's long or short, you can picture the word in that color. Just the act of making a mental picture in that color will make it more vivid and easier to connect the symbol to the sound. And in the future, you'll start to remember that color every time you hear the sound. It's a little trick, but it actually works. You have to practice a little bit, but it works. For the consonants, there, it isn't quite so simple. Um, there's a lot of reasons for that. But anyway, consonants, the best thing here is just to use the chart to clarify the difference between your language and English. So for example, in Spanish, first column, p, b. Often there's no distinction in Spanish between those sounds, depending on where you live. Like in the north, same here in Portugal, where I am. There's no difference. So we have to really start to train ourselves and hear the difference in English. Or column two, f, v. In many languages, there's no difference between those sounds. So rather than learning a system with the consonants, you're just focusing on the differences. Um, anyway, we'll go back to these charts in just a second. Let's go to today's class. So I'm going to scroll down. Got the table of contents on page uh, three and two. There are summaries of the previous classes which we'll look at. Today's class is going to be here, which is class three. We're going to work on exclamations. We're going to be working on many things, but the new thing will be exclamations. You'll see what I mean in just a second. All right. Last week, in class two, we worked on connecting the sounds of prepositions. When I say connecting, I mean using prepositions in everyday speech, as a native speaker would. So we learned that there are strong and weak forms of prepositions. So what? Who cares? <laughs> well, the so what is, after last class, last week that is, you should know when we use strong or weak forms of preposition. And the now what to do? We didn't really have a homework from last week, so I left that blank. But that's what we did last week. So what we're going to do is start there and, re and practice that a little bit. So now on page six, we're in today's class. Class three, intonation and stress with exclamations. Okay. So, we're going to do a little warm-up and review the rules for strong and weak prepositions. You should be able to answer these questions if you were here last week. Let's see if you can. Daniel, Adi, let's see if you can remember the rules that we learned. It's not easy to remember rules, but let's see if you can remember. So, Daniel, can you read the first rule for us? Uh, when a preposition comes at the end of a question, the pronunciation is... Got two choices here, strong or weak. <laughs> I, I wasn't I, uh, the class. You weren't? I thought you were. Okay. No, no. Let's see what Adi can come up with. Adi, can you read rule B? When a preposition comes in the middle of a sentence, the, f the pronunciation is usually mm, weak in fast in passage. 
No? That is correct. That is correct. So if answer B is weak, answer A must be strong. What? Let me see, Adi. You're absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Can you can you think of an example for either A or B? In other words, use a preposition in a sentence, and let's see if we can hear the difference. Um, you can do it for A or B. It doesn't matter which. So you can ask a question, or you can just use it normally. Okay. Let me think first. What? Um, it's not easy to come up with examples <laughs> like this. I know, but yeah. if you can, try. Okay. I don't know if I can. I cannot. Here's a difficult thing. To create a, a, a question with a preposition, you probably have to use a phrasal verb, like get in, come off, think about, go through. You probably have to use one of those to make it easy on you, on yourself. So if you can think of a phrasal verb, you can probably make it make a question out of it. What are you looking for? Okay. What are you looking for? Good. So that would be an example of of A. Well, what are you looking for? Because it comes at the end, and we hear for. We hear the entire word, so it's strong. Okay. So. Let's go back to Adi for a second. Daniel used for, which is kind of a preposition. It's close enough. <laughs> it's, I think it's uh, technically some kind of adverb, but anyway, it works. So can you use for inside of a sentence? And let's hear, if we, let's hear it as the weak sound. For. Uh, uh, Henry. For. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't what know why I'm, I'm so what, blind. What, what usually comes but after four? What usually comes four. after? What kind of... Safety? Four? Say again? Mm. Is it a noun, a verb? What comes afterwards? Uh, a verb. A noun, a verb. <laughs> No, but think of what's the first word that comes to mind with for, before or after. For example, I don't know, the, what comes to my mind is do a favor for, favor. Mm -hmm. for whom? For, for a noun, for somebody yeah. or someone. For somebody, exactly. <laughs> okay. So try to make a sentence out of that with do a favor. It's a good example. Uh, I do a favor. I do a favor for for him. That's fine. Okay. Now let's hear the weak form of for. That means instead of pronouncing it very clearly, you're going to swallow the word for so we barely hear it. So try again. This time let's hear the weak form, Adi. You're absolutely right, but you've got to get rid of the vowel. Instead of for, sounds weak. Try again. Oh, okay. I do a favor. I do a favor for him. Okay, it's better because it's for instead of for. Okay? I know it takes a little effort. I know it takes effort to think in a foreign language and create examples. I understand. But you both did a good job. A... Um, I forgot what your example was, Daniel. <laughs> it was I forgot what the sentence was. What are you looking for? Ah, okay. What are you looking for? You can hear for strongly. You can hear the vowel. In Adi's example, I do a favor for him. I do a favor for him. It's fur, fur. In other words, you don't hear the vowel. Just a quick note on the IPA. Let's take a look. Quickly, for or or is really it's because it's not exactly on the chart here. For it's 
probably closest to the short vowel, which you can see in the, what is this? Olive. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, olive frog. It's that sound, ah, but with the vowel, r, with the consonant, r. When you put ah and r together, or it's, I guess that's the best I can describe it. When R is next to a vowel, it really changes the sound. So it's not exactly that sound, but it's probably closest to that, I guess. Or, or, it depends, R or uh. Anyway, it's really the, supposed to be the short sound of, of O, which is an A. A, er, together is or. <clears throat> Close enough, anyway. And on the consonant chart, er, look at the column four, alveolar, and look at row E. So it's four E. It's that upside down R symbol, er, er, four. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so that's where it is on the chart. Eventually, I'm going to have a keyboard where I can type all these words using the IPA. It's a little difficult to do it right now, but as the classes continue, I'm going to try to have you decode words using the IPA symbols. Not today, it's too difficult, but I'll do it uh, hopefully starting next week. I have to get a keyboard to do it with. Anyway, that's where the positions are. Let's go back to the class and get some practice. Okay? So what we're going to do, now that we know the rules, is go back to the last thing we did last week give you a little practice with the strong and weak sounds and then we're going to move on to exclamations after that. So I'm going to scroll down to last class okay let's go all the way down to the last activity we did uh oh move your mobile phone let's go all the way down here there we go Okay, at the end of the last class, you had to choose one of the souvenirs from the display cabinet. Look at this on page 16. There is our display cabinet. We were talking about, I forget, travel before. So we've got a souvenir from a travel, uh, a trip that we took, something like that. So you have to choose a souvenir from the display cabinet. Your partner must guess which souvenir you're thinking of by asking questions like this. What's it made of? Oh, it's made of metal. What's it for? It's for watering flowers. But notice where you're using the strong and weak sounds. So, Sylvia, <coughs> which is the strong and weak sound in that question and answer? Is it A or B? Which is the strong sound, A or B? When we're talking about prepositions, yeah, it's, it's a, a strong sound. You're right. And why is that the strong sound? Yeah, it's a what it made of. Mm -hmm. You're absolutely right. And why do I say that's the strong sound? What is it about A that makes it a strong sound? The strong sound of, not what it made of the preposition the preposition is at the end of the of the question that's right very good so you were paying attention to the rules when it's at the end we put stress on it and therefore it's strong we hear it very clearly it's made of metal now here's where we can use the IPA Constantine I want you to read the answer B one more time I ask, what's it made of? And you say in B? Are you out there, Constantine? One second, please. Ah, okay. On, you should see the notes on screen, too, on page 15. You can just look at the screen. I see. Uh, ah, okay. So let me just hear your pronunciation. What's it made of? Read B. Uh, B. Mm -hmm. It is made of metal. 
Not it is, but it's. It's. Uh, Repeat, it's. It's made of metal. Very good. That's right. Now, is that the strong or the weak sound? Constantine, is that the strong or weak sound of the preposition of? Oh. Think about the rules that we looked at and think about Sylvia's answer. So in, in, in this sentence B, is it strong or weak? It's made of metal. Made of metal. It's made of metal. Mm -hmm. Is it strong or is it weak? According to the rules. Do you understand the question or is it not clear? Maybe it's not clear. No, I don't understand the question. Okay. Can you hear of or do you hear of? <laughs> do you hear the full sound of of or do you hear it very quickly and you hear it just partially? Listen, listen to A. What's it made of? Listen yes. to B. Uh -huh. Listen to B. It's made of metal. In which sentence do you hear the, the, the full sound of of? What's it made of? It's made of metal. Which one is the full sound of of? A or B? Um, full sound? Yeah. In, in A. In A. I agree. Yeah. So A is the strong sound. You hear the full word. Yes. B is the weak sound. You don't hear the full word. You hear of instead of of. Made of. Made of. What is made of? Yeah, not of, but if. Made of. What's it made of? What's made of? That's, that's it? Good. So, B is the weak sound of the preposition. B is the weak sound. Okay, let me just quickly clarify one thing. Look down here. In the weak sound, in the weak sound, what's it made of? Which consonant are you hearing? Daniel, look at that chart and tell me which column and row are you hearing? What's it made of? Made of. Uh. Which column are we in? Which consonant? Column two. I agree. Okay, so there's only one row in column two. It's row C. Now, is it the right or the left? Is it on the voiceless? left? <clears throat> is it voiceless or is it voiced? Listen carefully. What's it made of? Uh, uh, voiceless. That would be what's it made of? Made of. But listen again. What's it made of? Made of. Made of. Made of. V. Voiceless. No, it's not. Mm, it's oh, the voice, voice. Yeah, so is it on the right or left? On the right. <clears throat> it's on the right, yeah. It's on the right. And don't forget this little trick. Yeah. You'll, you'll see everyone, in, in every teacher who knows about pronunciation, and every YouTube video will show you the same technique. Put your finger here, and if your vocal cords are moving, it's voiced. So I say, made of... I'm still using my vocal cords. That's it. Made of... That's right. Made of... Be careful, because it's not made of... Sylvia. Made of... V. v. It's really a V sound. Okay? So I want to show you that, because... If you use the IPA, it really clarifies very quickly those sounds which your ears might miss. So, in column two, voiceless is f, made of f. You can't even pronounce of with that sound. You can only say off, O-F-F. -F. 
get off. That would be voiceless. Of is always voiced, and it sounds like a V. V like violet. Okay? So I wanted to show you that because on the IPA chart, it helps clarify very quickly how we're using our vocal apparatus, that machine in our mouths, which is our tongue, our lips, our throat, and our vocal cords. Okay, enough theory. Let's get back to the practice. So, you have to pick a souvenir and try, your partner has to guess. Okay? Those are your souvenirs. I'll try to make this big on screen. We can more or less see the whole thing. Let me scroll down just a bit. There we go. Okay, let's go around the room. Sylvia, you go first. You pick a souvenir, but don't tell us which one. Your partner will be Adi. He's got to ask a question to find out. Remember the questions that we saw earlier, like what's it made of? What's it for? Any kind of a who, what, when, where question will probably be okay. Okay, Sylvia, do you have your Wait. object? Yeah, I have. Adi, maybe we can all ask a question until we figure it out. Maybe that would be a better way, give you more speaking time. Adi, you go first. Okay. Was it made of... Um... Oh, that's good enough, Adi. <laughs> but let, yeah, let but me... I don't know how, <laughs> how to point. Okay. But let me hear it again with the V sound. V. Yeah, it's v. always a V. Yeah. Even though it's v. strong, even though the preposition is strong, it's still a V. So listen and repeat. What's it made of? What's it made of? Sounds good to me. Okay. Sylvia? What's it made yeah, of? okay. Um, it's made of a crystal. Okay, good. It should be a little weaker, though. It's made of. It's made of. Yeah, but not of. 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 Yeah, you really have it's to made swallow of. it. That's it. Okay, it's made of crystal. Good. To make it weak, you cannot pause on the word of. You've got to, you've got to almost skip it. Go right to crystal. It's made of crystal. Made it's of, made of crystal. Okay. That's it. That's it. Constantine, next question goes to you. Any WH word is okay. What, when, where, how? She said it's made of crystal. It's made of crystal. That's what she said. <laughs> See if you can ask another question, get a little more information from her. Uh, I can ask, uh, uh, well, sorry, I must uh, answer uh, Sylvia's question. No, yes, yes, you no. must ask Sylvia. It is made of uh, crystal. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. <laughs> You don't know what to ask. You can ask anything you like. <clears throat> what are you trying to do? What's the purpose of this activity, Constantine? What's our goal? Sorry. What is our objective here? Uh, objective here on the picture. It's a picture. No, no, no. In this activity, what's our objective? What's our reason for doing this activity? We've got two things we can say. We are trying to guess the object that Sylvia has chosen, and we are practicing strong and weak prepositions. Two things. Do you know what object Sylvia has chosen, Constantine? Yes. I don't know what uh, Sylvia has chosen. Ah, okay. So you need to ask a question to find out. So you need to ask her a question. Uh, sorry, cannot understand. What question did Adi ask, Constantine? 
remember, remember his question? Are you? Yeah. Uh, not, I I not remember what uh, question are you? Ah, he said, "What's it made of? What's it made of? What's it made of? Right. Uh, and what did Sylvia okay. say? Okay. Okay. So you can ask another question uh, and, and see what Sylvia so, says. All the questions uh, was uh, what is made of, and uh, Sylvia uh, give answer. It's made of crystal. Exactly. And uh, what I will be do? <laughs> you will ask a second question. Uh, ask second question. Mm -hmm. It's made of crystal, and it is. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. Well, try to ask with another word like who, what, where, when, how, any of those. Go ahead, try. Hmm. Uh, can I ask you, I must uh, answer uh, I must uh, choose what uh, in this picture. No, no, no. no? Sylvia has chosen. Ah, Sylvia has chosen. Mm -hmm. Do you know what she chose? Yes or no? I don't know. What exactly. You do. Exactly. Can you discover what she chose by asking? Can you discover what she chose? Okay, Constantine, watch, okay? Just watch. Okay. Daniel, I want you to ask the next question okay. and see if you can discover what object she chose. Okay. Uh, Sylvia, uh, what does this contain in? Mm. <laughs> Say again. Say again, Daniel. What does it contain in? In? No. Into? No. <laughs> no, no preposition. Uh, what does it contain? Exactly. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now I think that uh, you are guess. Uh, it contains perfume. <laughs> so, <Okay. laughs> it's easy. So, Constantine, what was her object? What did she choose, Constantine? What did I choose? No, what did Sylvia choose? Ah, what did Sylvia choose? Um, she said it contains perfume. So what object perfume. is it? Perfume. Uh, it is... I don't know. Look at the picture. Look. <laughs> perfume, perfume. Oh, perfume bottles. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Constantine, yes. I want you to choose an object in that picture. Okay? Okay. Uh, Do not say the object. Do not say it. Um, okay. One moment, please. Uh, okay. It is made of... Uh, wait, wait. Did you choose an object? Yes or no? I did not choose. No, no. Please choose one object. Please choose one object. Okay. Okay. Do it not, is, do no. not, do not say anything. <laughs> Don't say anything. Okay. Did you choose an object? Yes or no? Yes. Good. Sylvia, first question. Okay. Let me see. One moment. Um, okay, it's... Um. Who, okay, when, what, what, where? Yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, what it made of? What? What? Sorry. What it made of? Mm -mm. One more time. What's? What? Good. It made of. What? More or less. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> okay. I just I just want to hear the S in what. Okay. Because it's what, what okay. it is it made of? But Can we I have try to again? It. Sure. What? What it made of? What's it made of, Constantine? Uh huh. It's made of glass. It's made of glass. Excellent. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Adi, next question. <laughs> what's it? Was it for? What's it for? <laughs> Good, Constantine. What's it for? Oh. For means the use. What's the use? What's it for? Uh, it's for. It's it's uh, for. Uh, it's Stay one second, please. <laughs> okay. It's for flowers. It's for flowers. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Daniel, next question. Is it a basis? Is it a? Is is they a? Is is it a base? Is it a vase, Constantine? Is it a vase? Yes. Yes, it is. Congratulations. You win the vase, Daniel. I want a bisque. <laughs> you won the prize. Okay. okay. Daniel, pick an object. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Adi, first question. Mm, was it... Was it for... Um, it's uh, it's for it's for wear. It's for wearing. Wearing, yes. It's for wearing. It's for wearing. Okay. Wearing. Sylvia. Hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there are two things. Okay. And uh, what it made of? I need to hear that S, Sylvia. What? Sorry. Ah, oh, sorry. What? 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 No, but I need to hear the S. What? What? That's it. Okay. okay one, one more time. It's difficult for me. I know. Okay. I know it's difficult. What? What it made of? Good. Okay. It's made of uh, fabric and animal hair. Animal hair. <laughs> fabric okay. and animal hair. Okay. <laughs> Constantine. Yes. Do you know the object or will you ask a question? Do you want to guess or do you know what it is? I mean, do you want to guess or do you want to ask? Uh, I, don't, I don't know what is it. Okay. Please ask. Mm -hmm. uh, what is made of? Oh, we already know that, I think. Daniel? Okay. It's um, it's made of fabric and animal hair. Okay. I cannot understand what's uh, fabric. Fabric. Um, fabric. Fabric. Any. Any. No, clothes. Any. Clothes is made of fabric. <laughs> uh, fabric. And shirt. Well, one second, Constantine. Fabric, and animal hair. Ah, animal hair. Animal hair. Animal hair. Okay. okay. Do you know? Do you know the object now? Um, no, I don't know. Oh, this is really? something that you... Come on, Constantine. <laughs> this is something which you have because you're in Russia. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone has this. You're wearing one right now. I guarantee it. 
<laughs> All right. Who's got the object? Sylvia, Adi? Yeah, I've or got her. Okay. <laughs> Who say, say it again? Sylvia, yeah, say it again. Somebody. Okay, I, I suppose that it's a uh, far hat. Daniel? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Constantine, it was a fur hat. Look at the bottom. See fur hat? Typical no. Russian. No. No? On the right button. On the bottom right. On the bottom right. So uh -huh. okay. Fur hat. What's a fur hat made out of? Animal hair? Yeah? Bear. <laughs> bear. Hair, bear. Exactly. Bear hair. Bear. <laughs> yeah, hair. <yeah. laughs> so, Daniel's, Daniel's clues were good. Animal hair and fabric. Okay. That was a little bit of practice with strong and weak prepositions. Let's go on to something new. Uh, what happened to my... There we go. Oh, my page is stuck. One second. Let's go up here to exercise one. Okay. You're going to work on exclamations like, hey, or what a beautiful day, or when we get excited, we speak more we speak a bit loudly, or we might say something that is in the exclamation form. If I say, I'd say, what a great day, that is the question form, because you got what, but it's not a question. So that form, what a great day, is not really asking a question, it's an exclamation. So that structure, using a question word, is also an exclamation. So we got two kinds. When we're speaking loud and when we use a question, but it's not really a question. What we're going to do is work on, of course, the pronunciation of exclamations. Match the adjectives with their opposite in the chart. Let's start there with the adjectives. Before we go on exclamations, let's get some keywords. Here is a store, the Hideous Hat Company Limited. Look at those wonderful hats. Would you wear any of these hats, Sylvia? Could you repeat again, please? Sorry? Would, would you buy one of those hats? W where or when? Sorry? Would you buy one of no. those hats? <laughs> no? And I stop. <laughs> Why? Because you already have one? <laughs> Sylvia, are you there? Uh, so, sorry, it's, it's for me, the question. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> Could you repeat again, please? No, I'm not repeating again. Okay. Listen to this. What we're going to do is we're going to take some of those words. Um, let me just see how I did this. One second. So, we're matching the adjectives with their opposite in the chart. Give me a second, I need the chart. Oh, do I, did I put the chart? No, I didn't put the chart. Okay, let's do it like this. Um, I have to see how I set this up because now I'm a little bit confused. One second. One second here, hold on. How did I do this? Hmm. Now I'm a little bit confused how I set this up. Because I don't see the chart. I wrote chart and I don't see it. Um, okay. Okay, I see. I think I know what I did here. Okay. So. Who's got the cat? <laughs> I can hear a cat. Okay. 
It so was my the, turn. Oh, brain. I thought it was. I thought it was the cat. <laughs> okay, Sylvia, let's start with you. Look okay. at A. Okay. Can you, read, can you read A for us? The A one. <coughs> sorry, some hideous hat. Right. What's the adjective in that sentence? Ah, the adjective. Okay. Uh, he. Oops. It's a difficult word. Hideous. 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 That's it. Okay. okay. So our first goal is just to get some good adjectives. What's the opposite of hideous? Look at the words on the right. On the right. Okay. Um, hideous. Press. Savvy. Madness. Castle. Foolish. Depression. Mm, hideous. Attractive? No. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Maybe that's attractive. That's right. Hideous. Okay. Attractive. Say it again. Hideous. Attractive. Hideous. Attractive. Sounds good to me. Okay. Let's say a quick hello to Sergey, who's joining us right now. Hello, Sergey. How are you? Hi, John. I'm nice. Very good. Very good. Where are you, Sergey? Where are you in the world? Uh, Russia and it's Siberia. Like in Asia. Siberia. Yeah, You've Asia, been here right. before. What? You've been here before. Are you in, in Berlin? I think I remember you in a previous class. Am I wrong? Uh, maybe I visited to you, but it was like for some for a minute or so. So, I, but I didn't visit you know for a long time. Uh, like, okay. Uh, maybe that's the first time like, I spent. Okay. More well, time. nice to have you. <laughs> Thank you. So, we're working on pronunciation because this is yeah. pronunciation practice. Yes. And before, well, our main goal is about prepositions, but we're also going to practice some uh, other forms as well. Right now, we're just going to work on a little bit of vocabulary. So we've got this hideous hat company, and we're trying to match up opposites. Okay? Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I see. So take B for us. Okay. Uh, dis disgusting flavor, you mean, right? Mm -hmm. Disgusting. Disgusting. With an S. Disgusting. Disgusting. Good. What's the opposite in the list on the right? Uh, I believe it's maybe also attractive is also you know. Nah, uh, that's a better one. Okay. Hideous, um, attractive, disgusting. Remember, disgusting flavor. There's your key. Disgusting okay. flavor. Del del delicious. Delicious. Excellent. Adi, take C for us. Yep. <coughs> a sensible woman. Okay. What's the opposite? Uh huh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me try. Sensib sensible. What does sensible mean? Teacher. Teacher? You mean me? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Teacher John. Oh, right. Sensible means logical, basically. Thinking logically. Monotonous. So is it monotonous? No? No, because monotonous would be always talking like this, monotonous, one tone, monotonous. So what's the opposite of someone who is logical? It's um, foolish, no? Exactly. Say again. Foolish. Foolish. Excellent. Good. Foolish. Okay. Constantine, try D for us. Read D, please. Oh, sorry. D, letter D. D like dog. Uh, D, uh, D a stale cake. Excellent. What's the opposite of stale? Do you know? I don't know. Stale is when the cake is old. You don't want to eat it. It's old. It's hard. It's dry. Oh, okay. What's the opposite? Look at the words on the right. Um, sorry. 
I don't know what I must do. Choose the opposite word. For example, Constantine, what's the opposite of hot? What's the opposite of hot? Um. Hot and what? What's what the opposite? Mean? What do you mean? Opposite? Of hot? Opposite. opposite. Listen, listen. Hot and cold. The hot opposite of cold. yeah. The opposite of hot is cold. What's mm -hmm. the opposite of black, Constantine? White. Exactly. What's the opposite of stale? In um. letter D. Um, one minute, please. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Well, do you want to guess well, looking at the list? Delicious, we used. Fresh, we did not use. Shabby, uh -huh. we did not use. Monotonous, we did not use. Ghastly, we did not use. Foolish, we used. Depressing, did not use. Attractive, we did use. Uh, foolish. Foolish, we used already. We already used it. But listen, can a cake be foolish? A cake, you eat a cake at the pastry shop. Yum, cake. We're talking about the opposite of a stale cake. Okay, just listen, Constantine. Oh, sorry, no, no foolish. Uh, yeah? Um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Daniel, what do you think? Fresh, maybe fresh? Yes, fresh, exactly, yes. Yes, okay. <laughs> very good, very good. Thank you. <laughs> so the opposite of stale is fresh. The opposite. The opposite of black is white. The opposite of cold is hot. Now you know what opposite means. Opposite. Not the same. Exactly different. Exactly the difference. Daniel, last one. Let's do E. Uh, smart jacket. A smart jacket. Smart does not mean intelligent here. No, no, no. <clears throat> Very, very beautiful, very... Yeah, beautiful... You look handsome with a smart jacket. Beautiful, elegant, something elegant. like that. Elegant. Okay, what's the opposite? Shabby. Shabby, very good. Shabby is falling apart, it's got holes in it, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, let me just see, we're kind of out of time here. Oh, look, someone's even writing the words in. I didn't see that. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize you were writing the answers. Very good. Um, we're going to use these words in the next exercise, but we're out of time right now. You're going to be describing this guy in the picture, okay? But we've got to stop here because we're out of time. So, listen, I'm going to try to schedule a second class so that we can practice these words and I'll send you a link if I can find the time. I think on Wednesday there's still an hour available. So I'll send you a link if I can do it. Okay? If not, it's going to have to wait for next week. But what we're going to do is take these words, use them describing a picture. We're going to be using countable and uncountable nouns. We're going to work on the intonation of exclamations, because you're going to say, what hideous clothes? We're going to work on our intonation, and you can see the intonation there at the bottom of the screen that we're going to practice. Okay? So we're going to stop for now, but like I said, if I can give, get a second time slot, I will schedule um, a follow-up class this week that we can continue to practice this. Okay? Let's stop here, everyone. I'm going to be back in just a minute for the business class, and we're going to be working on the grammar of predictions in our business class about change. That'll be coming up in exactly one minute from now, okay? Bye for now, everyone. See you soon. Very good job, by the way. Very good job, Constantine. I'm glad you didn't give up.
Bye for now, everyone. Bye. Bye for now. Bye, bye.